Hi, in this video we are going to quickly see about cardiac action potential. So this question has been asked previously as a short essay question. Like with, with a neat graph explain the electrical events of a ventricular muscle. What is the cause and importance of its long refractory period? It has also been asked as a part of physiological basis questions and also as a draw and label question. So we will see how to approach an answer. So in the introduction you can write that the normal resting membrane potential of myocardial fibers is minus 90 millivolts. Okay. And the action potential, the cardiac action potential is generated in the cardiac tissues when they are activated in response to the impulse arising from the SA node. So when the SA node fires, that impulse will be transmitted to the cardiac tissues and they will in turn produce an action potential. Okay. And it is also called the fast response action potential. So in cardiac tissue, we've got two different types of action potential. One is a fast response action potential and the other is a slow response. So in the normal cardiac tissue, we call it as fast response, whereas in our SA node and AB node, which are our pacemaker tissues, we call it as slow response action potentials. So you can write these points in the introduction. Next, we'll see the different phases of a ventricular action potential. So for that, we can draw the time in the x-axis. So the normal duration is around 220 milliseconds. So you can draw from around 0 to 220 milliseconds. Then on the y-axis, you can write about the uh, write the normal range of potential change. So we said that the resting membrane potential is minus 90. So you can uh, write the potential from minus 90 to around plus 30 millivolts. Okay. Now the first phase is a phase of rapid depolarization and it is also called phase 0. So it is during this time that the potential just shoots up from minus 90 to around plus 30. That is a rapid depolarization which leads to rapid change in the potential. Okay. Now the next phase is a rapid, initial rapid repolarization that is phase 1. So just after a rapid depolarization we have a small part which is known as the initial rapid repolarization which is phase 1. Now this is followed by a phase 2 which is our plateau, our plateau phase in which the potential remains constant for a period of time. And then we have got the slow repolarization phase which is the phase 3 in which the potential goes back to almost its resting membrane potential. And finally, in the phase 4, it reaches the resting membrane potential. So there are basically 5 phases which are 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Ra depolarization, initial rapid repolarization, plateau, slow repolarization and finally resting state. So these are the different phases of a ventricular action potential. Now we can uh, draw a diagram to depict this. So again the time in time on the x-axis and the membrane potential on the y-axis. But when you draw the diagram, it is not just enough that you draw the phases. You also have to draw the different ionic bases also. Okay, You have to mention the permeability of different ions. So we said the first phase is that of rapid depolarization. So here the chief current that is involved is that of sodium. See when the potential, when there is a stimulus, there is rapid depolarization due to opening up of the sodium channels. So since the permeability of the sodium is increased, we, we depict it as an increase in sodium current. Okay. So you have to write here as increased INA. Okay. So that is about phase of depolarization. Next phase is phase of rapid repolarization. Now that is because once the potential reaches around plus 30 millivolt, the sodium channels will begin to close. Okay. So there will be a decrease in the sodium current. But along with that, there will be an increase in potassium efflux. There will be opening up of the potassium channels. So there will be increased potassium efflux. So that is the cause for a rapid repolarization. So see there is a decrease in the sodium current and an increase in a potassium current. So that is responsible for the phase of rapid repolarization. Then we have a plateau phase. Now during the plateau phase what happens is there is opening up of calcium channels also. So since in this phase, there is both loss of positive charge as well as gain of positive charge. So the efflux of potassium is being compensated by the influx of calcium. So that is why our potential here is unchanged. Okay. So remember the reason for plateau phase is both uh, the opening up of the potassium channels as well as opening up of the calcium channels. Okay. And then we have the phase 3 in which a calcium current decreases. That is why we have depicted it here like this. There is a decrease in calcium current. But the potassium current 
continues to increase so that is why we've got a fall in potential and this is the cause for a phase of slow repolarization and finally we've got the phase 4 which is resting membrane potential okay so when you draw the diagram remember to write these ionic bases also which current is being increased or which current is being decreased okay so now we'll just write about the ionic bases also so the phase of rapid depolarization it is due to opening up a voltage gated sodium channels we said that it is due to opening up a voltage gated sodium channels and then the phase of initial rapid repolarization is due to closure of sodium channels as well as opening up of the potassium channels the rapid repolarization phase then the plateau phase is due to the prolonged opening up of voltage gated calcium channels. So efflux of potassium channels contributes to the maintained sustained depolarization. So see as I said before the potassium channels are, potassium channels are open, calcium channels are op also open. There is efflux of potassium and influx of calcium so that is why we have got a plateau phase there. Then the phase 3 is a slow repolarization phase which is due to cessation of uh, calcium influx as well as increased permeability to potassium. So that is why we've got the phase 3 and finally resting membrane potential phase that is phase 4. So now we can also write about the refractory period of the cardiac muscle. So what is meant by refractory period? Refractory period of a muscle is a period during which the muscle does not evoke a response no matter how strong the stimulus is. Okay. So basically there are two types of refractory period which is absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. Okay, so here from this picture itself, we can see that almost most duration of this action potential is under the refractory period. So here you should also mention about the ionic basis of this uh, refractory period also. So we know that uh, absolute refractory period is due to the inactivation of the sodium channels. But here in case of cardiac, cardiac action potential, we have to remember that the, there is calcium channels also. So it is because of the plateau phase that we get such a long duration of absolute refractory period. Okay, So it is basically because of both sodium as well as calcium channels that we have got a very long absolute refractory phase in case of cardiac muscle. Now the related refractory period is the period during which the sodium channels come out of its inactivated state. So that is similar in case of skeletal muscle. Okay. So what are the advantages of a long refractory period? So as I said before, the absolute refractory period of a ventricular muscle is around 200 milliseconds when the total duration is just 250. See, of 250 milliseconds, nearly 200 is absolute refractory period. And the related refractory period is the rest 50 milliseconds. So the refractory period extends to most part of the mechanical response. So what is the advantage? See, because of this, the mechanical responses of ventricular muscles cannot be merged and therefore the cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized. So this is the most important advantage of this uh, very long refractory period. Okay, The cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized. So this can be asked as a physiological basis question also. Okay. So as always our answer will not be complete until we write some applied aspects. So in case of this ventricular action potential you can write about antiarrhythmic drugs. So we know the antiarrhythmic anti drugs are used for the treatment of arrhythmia. So you can just briefly mention two or three drugs and uh, write its effect. Okay. So when you get a question like cardiac action potential, you have to first write about the different phases of action potential and also its ionic basis and then draw a neatly labeled diagram showing the different currents. Then you also have to mention about the refractory period, its ionic basis as well as the advantage. That it is because of the refractory period that a cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized. So I hope this question is clear. Thank you.